Rockport, Indiana is a quiet town along the Ohio River with a lot of interesting and very unusual surprises. It has a cave home along the river, a rock wall observation ledge, Abraham Lincoln history, a museum, an amazing time capsule and was where a Hollywood movie was made. Not to mention Florence Henderson, whom played the part of Carol Brady in the Brady Bunch, grew up and attended school here. There's much, much more here than initially meets the eye. For starters, there's an unusual park in front of the Ohio River. Lots of towns have a riverfront park, but this one has a rock wall observation ledge. Apparently, people used to climb up freehand and would fall. So they built stairs and a cage so you can't plummet to your death. A little sign on the front tells how tall the water got during the Great Flood of 1937. A short distance further along the shoreline is a cave. It's where James Langford and his family lived in 1808 until he could build a home. They were the first white family to live at Rockport. I found this beautiful stone that someone had left behind. I left it for the next visitor to enjoy. In the distance is the William H. Natcher Bridge. Completed in 2002, the bridge is a massive 4,505 feet across and 67 feet wide. Sitting along the waterfront is just a great way to decompress. At the end of the property is this stone marker. It memorializes where Abraham Lincoln and his friend, Alan Gentry, took a flatboat from here in 1828. They floated down to the Mississippi River to sell goods and while there saw slavery and its ugliness. Abraham Lincoln was absolutely disgusted and deeply affected. He said, if I ever get a chance to hit that thing, I'll hit it hard. This 1828 trip would affect Abraham Lincoln for the rest of his life. For sure, he didn't come back as the same person. The original courthouse is gone, where an older Abraham Lincoln came back home from Illinois and gave his speech supporting Henry Clay for president in 1844. 
The courthouse here was completed in 1921. And this sign speaks of how Lincoln spent the night here in a tavern hotel on this hill after he gave that speech. But that place is also gone. Great American history was being lost as the years went by, and that planted a seed in a man named George Honig, a dream that would end in something quite extraordinary. George Honig was born here at Rockport and lived among people that literally knew and spoke to Abraham Lincoln and his family. Abraham Lincoln was a hometown hero, proving that anyone could be anything, even if they weren't born rich. That inspired George that he too could do anything. George went on to study art, get a college education, and developed a reputation for making historical monuments for a living. Near the end of his career, it was the 1930s, and the country was in the middle of a depression. The economy collapsed, and people were without jobs. People lost everything, and something needed to be done to get Americans back on their feet. The Works Progress Administration was created to generate jobs and get America working again, so they'd have money to stimulate the economy. People were offered all kinds of jobs. Some jobs were as mundane as digging ditches one day, only to fill them up the next, but others built amazing things that are still around today. George Honig saw an opportunity to make a dream a reality, even if he was in his 60s at the time. George came up with a plan to build a time capsule, a village, that memorializes and tells the story of Abraham Lincoln's 14 years lived in Spencer County, Indiana. This ambitious plan would bring his sister's actual cabin and many others to the site, as well as build other structures from the ground up. After the plan was approved, WPA workers were organized and put to work. White and black workers worked side by side to create a memorial that's lasted nearly 100 years. Much like a theme park, a concession stand and souvenirs were offered. And Abraham Lincoln's legacy was kept alive. Without a doubt, if it weren't for George Honig, the village wouldn't have happened. And I can only imagine that a large piece of American history would have been lost. Work was completed in 1935. Today, a colorful sign sits at the entrance of the town's fairgrounds. This statue at the village gate sums it up best. 14 years of Abraham Lincoln's life were spent here, from a boy to a man. The village is made up of 14 buildings, 12 of which tell the story of Abraham Lincoln's family and their neighbors from 1818 to 1830. It stands over 80 years later, telling how a great man became a president by a great man that had a dream, George Honig. One of the first buildings a pioneer might see on the frontier was a blockhouse. These were created as tiny secure forts for soldiers to live in during Indian raids in the Indiana Territory. They were scarcely used, if ever. Leaving Kentucky for Indiana, Abraham's father, Thomas Lincoln, built a home for his wife Nancy and his kids Sarah and Abraham. 
It had a dirt floor and a lean-to workshed in the back, as Thomas was a skilled carpenter by trade. After Nancy Hanks Lincoln died, Thomas remarried a widow, Sarah Bush Johnston, whom brought three of her own children to Indiana. She insisted that Thomas build wooden floors, and she brought fine furniture of her own, making it one of the nicest houses around. Abraham's cousin, Dennis Hanks, also moved in, making it a table lined with eight people. Abraham, Dennis, and his stepbrother John all slept in the loft upstairs. I can only imagine the stories and laughs up there, with Abraham known for his silly sense of humor. One time, as a practical joke, Abraham got some local boys to walk through the mud and he held them upside down so they could leave footprints on the ceiling as a joke. True story. Very important to uncertain pioneer life was the Little Pigeon Baptist Church. Abraham and his father helped build the original that used to sit in what's now Lincoln State Park. The entire Lincoln family were church members, except Abraham. It wasn't a religious decision on his part. You had to be married or 21 to be a member at that time. He did attend regularly though. However, he also got in trouble at home for making fun of the pastors and other members. Fireplaces were installed on each side to keep everyone warm during the cold Indiana winters. But after a tough week, it was a joy to listen to the minister's words of hope on Sunday morning and to pick up a hymnal and sing songs of praise with your neighbors. A second story was added for travelers to stay while they were in the area. At the schoolhouse, we find a place of learning in Abraham's early years. The seats were hard and there were few amenities. The teachers were stern, but they had to be, with wild-eyed pioneer kids. But bringing the teacher an apple might just win you points. You were taught to read, write, and do basic arithmetic. Before fancy white paper, pencils, and crayons, kids wrote on slate tablets like these. Though Abraham liked to learn, he wasn't much of a classroom student. But it wasn't like he didn't make his mark on the world. Throughout Abraham's youth, he worked for a variety of people in Spencer County. Abraham and his sister Sarah both worked for Josiah Crawford. As the sign above the door says, both Abraham and Sarah borrowed books from Josiah. And when the book, The Life of Washington, was ruined by rain, Abraham worked to pay it off, making it the first book he ever owned. It is surprisingly spacious inside with a good-sized loft, tall ceiling, and large fireplace. In 
and plenty of room for a dining room table and beds. However, the big deal is the cabinet that sits across the room. Abraham built a cabinet for Josiah with help from his father. This one is a replica. The real one, made by the hands of Abraham and Thomas, is in the nearby museum. As soon as Abraham was old enough to swing an axe, he was working. He disliked really hard physical labor, but loved jobs that let him socialize, like the one he had at William Jones' store. Abraham unpacked boxes, helped slaughter pigs, and talked with everyone that came by. Who wants to play checkers? Abraham stayed friends with William Jones for the rest of his life. He visited him when he came back from Illinois. Ironically, when Abraham's views on slavery ignited the Civil War, an older William Jones joined the war as a colonel. He was killed at the Battle of Atlanta in 1864. Abraham also worked for James Gentry whom sent him to New Orleans with his son, Alan. In 1828, they floated down the Ohio River to the Mississippi on a flatboat. What an amazing adventure that must have been. This cabin is also known as the Gentry Mansion, as James was a rich landowner and trader and had access to finer things than many in Spencer County. Still, no indoor plumbing. If you had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, it was either in this or risk going outside where wild animals could be anywhere. Young Abe Lincoln was learning about business, negotiations, and how to talk with many kinds of people. And around Spencer County, he learned a lot from many influential people. While Abraham had very little formal education, he was always learning by reading and talking to people. One of his favorite teachers was Azel Dorsey. Through many hours, days, and months, Azel taught Abraham math and also public speaking, a skill he'd use for the rest of his life. With a little imagination, you can see Abraham and Azel sitting at the table, sharing bread, and working on speaking clearly to an audience. The cabin was at one time the Spencer County Court of Law, and the desk is from one of the long forgotten courthouses. You can truly sense the spirit of the past. John Pitcher was the first lawyer to take up residence in Spencer County and later became the first city attorney.
John became very important to Abraham as he taught the young man about law and politics. Abraham walked 17 miles just to borrow books from him and talk. It was here that Abraham decided why he wanted to be. First an attorney, then a state legislator, a congressman, and finally the President of the United States. Abraham would rather use his head than his back, and he knew that law was his way out of a hard pioneer life. By far, the largest house in the village is the Daniel Grass home. Daniel was an influential man that lived in Rockport, and this was his actual home. It was moved to the village in the 1930s. Daniel was a justice of the peace, judge, senator, and also sheriff of Spencer County. He was very active in politics. No doubt, young people like Abraham would be very impressed and want to be like him. The bed on display is very typical for the period. You've heard the phrase, good night, sleep tight. It comes from the time when people did not have modern beds, but a webbing of rope. You had to frequently tighten the rope so the bed didn't sag. Across the breezeway is the kitchen and access to the full loft upstairs. If you wanted to stay up late, you had to have a lantern or candles. Back then, people made their own with this device. If you wanted butter, same thing. You had to make your own. Steep stairs lead to the loft. There are three sections up here. And the way down is just as steep as going up. But the mind of Abraham Lincoln was formed by more than just business, law, and politics. There was also immense tragedy. This was once the cabin owned by his sister, Sarah Lincoln Grigsby, and her husband, Aaron. It was moved here in the 1930s from what's now Lincoln State Park. Sarah only lived there two years before dying during childbirth in 1828. She was just 20 years old. As Abraham and Sarah were very close, he was completely devastated. Abraham blamed Aaron for not getting help earlier and bitterly held him responsible for her death. Many historians say that Abraham never got over it and would sink into deep periods of depression. Perhaps the hardest lesson Abe ever learned was that nothing or no one lasts forever. In 1830, the Lincoln family left their home at Pigeon Creek for Illinois, where they crossed the Wabash River at Vincennes is commemorated by this Illinois memorial. Abraham left his beloved mother and sister 
in Indiana, beneath the earth of Indiana's countryside, closing the chapter on his childhood. He would not return for 14 years. Abraham Lincoln returned to his hometown in 1844, campaigning for Henry Clay, and gave a speech at the Spencer County Courthouse. He stayed at a tavern above the Ohio River in Rockport. This is a replica of that tavern, known as Brown's Inn. And surely, as he sat there at that evening's dinner table, eating among strangers, he remembered the many faces of people that had changed his life and made him the man that he was in little Spencer County. The next day he would speak at Evansville. He would visit the place he grew up in Spencer County the place he worked, learned, played, and wrestled with other boys. And one final time, his mother's grave. He would never be back again. A museum was later added to the Pioneer Village and serves as an entrance. Many Lincoln artifacts and memorabilia can be found here. The museum's prized possession is this cabinet built by Thomas and Abraham Lincoln. There's an excellent gallery of period dresses. As well as local history. It should not be surprising that such an amazing time capsule drew Hollywood to its door. The 1955 motion picture, The Kentuckian, was filmed here and was directed by and starred Burt Lancaster. For the movie, this building was built as a tobacco warehouse. This photo shows the film crew using the Daniel Grass home as part of production. There's also a picture of the Hollywood premiere. And if you look close, you'll find Burt Lancaster's signature. In the museum's theater, you can watch a presentation about the village's role in that Hollywood movie. But perhaps more importantly, it's a place that one man's vision created, 
teaching us that dreams and hard work really can make incredible things happen. And if Abraham Lincoln taught us anything, it's not where our story begins, but the chapters we write every day afterward.